morning and welcome to our online service here at Emmanuel Pentecostal Tabernacle Virgin Island Carter's Cove. We're so glad that you have joined with us today and we trust that you have had a great week and we trust that you will enjoy this service as well. At this time we're about to have a time of worship together and then we're going to have a time of uh, looking into the Word of God. But before we do that, why don't we have a word of prayer together? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we had today to gather in your presence through this online platform. I pray, Lord, that you would bless every individual who's watching this service. May they sense and feel your presence, your closeness, and your power at work in their lives today. We pray, Father, that everything that's said and done will bring honor and glory to your name. And we pray, Lord, that our hearts will be open to receive from you. I bless our worship team as they lead us and bless the preaching of your word. We ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen and amen. God bless you as you worship along with us this morning.
the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. The Father turns His face away As wounds which bar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross I sinned upon his shoulders, ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was a I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his words have paid my ransom, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. We want to thank our worship team for leading us again today, and we want to thank our volunteers for helping us put this service together. We can't do it without them, so we greatly appreciate them today, of course, for all the work and commitment they put into this ministry. We're going to continue and conclude uh, this a uh, three-part sermon that we've been doing over the last couple Sundays entitled The Pattern of a Praying Church. And today, uh, we're going to be looking at The Pattern of a Praying Church, Part 3. And uh, so we want to uh, read our scripture again, which is found in Matthew chapter 6, uh, beginning to read at verse 9 today, down to verse 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Last week, Pastor Jenna taught on the first three phrases of this prayer, the pattern of how to pray that Jesus gives us. First phrase is, our Father who is in heaven. You see, we need to know who we are praying to. The God of heaven, who is all powerful. Who is a good Father, who loves and cares for us as his children. The second phrase is, hallowed be your name. We should begin our prayer with worship. Because of who God is. The testimony of who God is. Who is God to you? 
And we should lift his name above all other things in our lives. The third phrase that we looked at last week was, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for God's kingdom to come in earth in the sense of it praying for God's return. But we also pray for God's kingdom to come and will be done on earth today as we see God at work in our world, in our community, church, and personal lives. Where we want to pick up today is the fourth phrase. And the fourth phrase that we want to look at this morning is, give us this day our daily bread. Does anyone like bread? Any of you that are listening this morning like bread? I certainly do. In fact, having a slice of toast is about one of my favorite bedtime snacks. I don't have it often, but I love it. For many Newfoundlanders, bread is an essential part of the diet. Most have bread in the mornings. Others may have bread at other points throughout the day. I've heard people say, I can have what I want in the house, but if I haven't got any bread, it feels like I have nothing. Likewise, bread was important to the first century Jewish diet. They too had bread with just about every meal. However, when Jesus told the early disciples to pray for daily bread, he wasn't referring to literal, literal bread, he was meaning something else. In our culture, the word bread can have different meanings as well. For example, in a relationship, the person who makes the most money or is the primary provider is often called the breadwinner. Often when someone speaks of a job, they will just say it puts bread on the table. Bread can refer to money itself. In our language, bread can be symbolic to mean provision for our needs. Let me ask you this question. Where does our provision really come from? Does it come from our job, our resources, our efforts? They may be means of provision, but all provision in life comes from, come from the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, whose name is Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord is our provider. Our provision in life comes solely from God. It is all the work of his hand. And when Jesus told us to pray, give us this day our daily bread, he was telling us to bring our needs for today to the one who is able to meet the need. Friend, let me remind you this morning that there isn't a need in your life currently, nor a need that will come into your life in the future that God can't meet. It doesn't matter what it is or how impossible it may seem. If it's truly a need, then you can trust that God will meet that need. Why? Because He promised He would, and God is not a liar. He keeps His promises. The Bible says, And my God shall supply all of your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. If you need a job, ask God for a job. If you need direction, ask God for direction. If you need wisdom, ask God for wisdom. If you need healing, ask God for healing. If you need provision, ask God to provide. And this prayer is not just confined to the physical things of life. It also encompasses the spiritual things as well. If you feel weak from the journey, God can give you strength. If you are feeling stressed, overwhelmed, and worried, God can give you peace. If you feel down, discouraged, and depressed, God can fill you with joy. And if you have a broken heart, God can heal your broken heart. Whatever your need is, we serve a God who is able to meet the need. While God is the provider, there is an interesting phrase in this part of the prayer, and it is this, this day. It doesn't say, give us this week or this month. It says, give us this day our daily bread. So what does that tell us? God promises that if we depend on Him, He will meet our need for today, and therefore, we don't need to worry about tomorrow. When COVID first began, I remember all the craze as people were buying toilet paper. Anyone remember that? People were filling shopping carts with toilet paper. And the reason why they were doing it was because they were afraid that the supply was going to run out. Their concern wasn't just having enough for today. They wanted to ensure that their need was met for weeks. The reality is, here we are over two years later, and these people didn't really need to didn't really need to stockpile all that toilet paper. They didn't really need to worry about tomorrow because the supply didn't run out. And they could have easily just have had their need met today as they could have had it met two years ago. 
A lot of Christians today are stressed out, worried, anxious, and even depressed because they are consumed with whether or not they're going to have their need met in the future. But Jesus is pretty straightforward on this topic when he says, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? In other words, do not worry about having your needs met. And the reason why he tells us not to worry is because he knows what we need. Instead of being given to worry, Jesus tells us to do two things. Number one, don't worry about tomorrow. And number two, put God first today. Pray to him and depend on him. Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all of your needs will be given to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. You see, friend, when you put God first and depend on him today, he will take care of all of your tomorrows. Because the truth is, the same God who is able to meet our needs today will be able to meet them tomorrow because His supply isn't going to run out. So Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Meet our needs for today. Let tomorrow be taken care of when tomorrow comes. But let me rest in the truth of your provision for today. The fifth phrase that Jesus teaches us to pray is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. A story is told of an elderly man who took his little grandson for a walk around the local cemetery. Pausing before one gravestone, he said, there lies a very honest man. He died owing me $50, but he struggled to the end to pay off his debt. If anyone has gone to heaven, he has. Then he walked on a bit further and then came to another grave. The old man pointed to the gravestone and said, now there's a different type of man altogether. He owed me $60 and he died without ever trying to pay me back. If anyone has gone to hell, he has. The little boy thought for a while, and then he said, you know, Grandpa, you are very lucky. Why, asked the old man. Well, whichever, whichever place you go to, you'll have some money to draw on. Many of us in life have all been in debt. We have all owed something to someone or something. Seven years ago, I went in debt to Toyota because I needed a new car, but I couldn't afford to pay the full price of the car at one time. So for every two weeks for the last seven years, I've had to make a payment to help pay off the debt that I owed. Friend, the reality is, you and I, because of our sin, owed a debt to God that in of ourselves, we didn't have the resource to pay. No amount of good works could pay it off. No amount of positive morality could pay it off. No amount of money could pay it off. It was a debt that no matter what we did, we could not pay it off. But God, because he loved us so much, sent his son Jesus to this earth to die on the cross as the payment for our sin. And because of what Christ has done, our debt has been paid in full. And despite who we are or what we have done, we can be forgiven if we just simply ask. The Bible says if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. When it comes to this particular portion of the Lord's Prayer, one author said this is an everyday prayer because we sin and need forgiveness every day of our lives. There are times we sin and don't even realize it and God's grace abounds to forgive us when we ask. But here's the important point that Jesus was trying to drive home. And that is because we have been forgiven by God for our sins, the natural overflow of our lives should be to forgive others when they sin against us. One author said, forgiven people should be forgiving people. The scripture teaches us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Colossians 3, 13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any, any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now I recognize that this is easier said than done, but it is possible when we pray and ask God to help us, which is why it's included in this portion of the prayer. The truth is, Forgiveness is not only beneficial for the one being forgiven, but it's also beneficial for the one doing the forgiving. You see, the fact is, if we don't deal with the issue, if we don't forgive, 
That unforgiveness will take root in our hearts, causing us to become bitter and miserable. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 says, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. There are many people today who are losing out with God, who are miserable, who are bitter, because they hold on to unforgiveness, because they refuse to let go of something that happened in the past. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I recognize that some offenses that some have experienced are serious. I am in no way diminishing that. But the fact is, this unforgiveness is controlling your life and keeping you from experiencing all that you were destined to experience in this life. One of my mentors, Pastor Albert Parmeter, who's in heaven today, would always say these words. Unforgiveness and bitterness is like you drinking a poison but expecting the other person to die. It only destroys you. Friend, God will do with us today. He will help us to forgive, but we have to ask Him for His help. Not only do we need to forgive because it affects us personally, we need to forgive because it's detrimental to our relationship with God. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 to 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive your sin. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When our forgiveness is in our hearts, it places a barrier between us and God that hinders our fellowship with Him. And when we are not in fellowship with Him, the benefits of knowing Him are absent from us. God's presence seems distant. God's presence seems distant from us. His strength and life seem absent from us. His joy and peace seem unobtainable to us. And the only way to reconnect and receive the benefit is to remove the barrier. I encourage you today, if you are listening this morning, you are struggling with unforgiveness, to ask God to help you to forgive those who have sinned against you. And God will help you. The final phrase that Jesus teaches us to pray is this. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Someone once said these words, Lord, lead me, into tem lead me not into temptation. I can find it for myself. Lord, lead me not into temptation. I can find it for myself. Have you ever experienced temptation before? I'm sure we all have. Temptation is a normal part of life. Temptation is defined as the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. Sometimes it is the desire to not do something that we know we should do. In some way or another, we all face temptation. But the question is, where does temptation come from? In this phrase of the Lord's Prayer, it may seem to imply that temptation comes from God, but we know that's not true. For James tells us, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and entice. Temptation doesn't come from God, it comes from ourselves. When we are born, we are born in sin, and therefore that sinful part of us is what leads us to temptation. So if temptation doesn't come from God, and we will experience temptation, what is it we are praying here? We are simply praying this, Lord help us. That's essentially what we're praying, Lord help us. I am weak, and there are many things in this world trying to pull me away from you. Please help me not give in to it. Lord, if we face temptation, give us the wisdom to take the way out, strength that only comes from you to not go down that road. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Often we hear the phrase, sin will take you farther than you ever intended to go. When we give in to temptation, we never mean to go too far. But as we give in to temptation little by little, we get further and further from the, from the right thing. When we pray and ask God to keep us from temptation, we are saying that we want to say no right from the beginning to keep walking in freedom from sin and not head down that road at all. You see, temptation is what the evil one, the devil, uses to try and destroy our relationship with God. 
And what destroys our relationship with God is sin. And how we sin is by going down the road of temptation. However, the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors through Christ. And that the one who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And through the Holy Spirit empowering us, we don't have to give in to sin. We don't have to fall into the trap of temptation. We can pray and trust God to deliver us and help us to overcome when temptation from the evil one comes our way. As we bring this message to a close, maybe you're listening today and you have a need. Remember, God is your provider, so reach out to Him in prayer. Maybe you need forgiveness. God is loving, gracious, and merciful. Reach out to Him today and He will forgive you. Or maybe you need uh, to offer forgiveness to someone else, but perhaps you find it hard to do so. Reach out to the Lord and ask Him to help you, and He will. Or perhaps you are struggling with temptation or sin. Reach out to the Lord in prayer and ask God to protect you, and He will give you the strength you need to overcome. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the pattern of a praying church. Jesus gives us the pattern on how to pray. And may we all take his teaching to our hearts and apply them to our lives so that we may become the people who pray effectively that he desires us for us to become. Maybe you're listening this morning. You say, Pastor, I don't have that relationship with Jesus. I want you to know this morning that Jesus loves you and he wants a relationship with you. And if the desire of your heart today is to accept the Lord as your Savior, would you please pray these words after me this morning? Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know I need you. Forgive me. Cleanse me. And help me to live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you please let us know? We want to help you and we want to celebrate with you for making the best decision you have ever made. At this time, the worship team is going to lead us in another song. We invite you to worship along with us this morning. And then after that, we'll have a closing prayer together. God bless you. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross for the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I cherish the old rugged crowd Till my trophies at last I lay down I will claim to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God Lift His glory above To bear it to dark Calvary So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged, old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown And that old rugged cross stained with blood So divine, such a wonder for beauty I see was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon 
and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophy is at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a cry. that old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rocky cross and exchange it someday for a crown.
We want to thank you for joining us this morning and we trust that you've enjoyed this service today. We're going to be back here again next Sunday at 11 a.m. So we invite you to join us again at that time. We're going to have a closing prayer together. So I invite you to pray along with me this morning. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had to gather uh, together through this online platform. I ask your blessing upon every person who's watching this service and may they sense and feel your presence. May you strengthen them. May you encourage them, uplift them. And Lord, as we head into another week, God, may you help us to overcome the obstacles that may be in our paths. May you give us the strength that we need to continue to serve you and help us to be a witness for you to others in this day. Father, I pray for the needs of individuals who are listening right now. Lord, you know what they are. We pray, Father, that by your power and by your presence that you administer and meet each need. God, we love you. We ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you here again next Sunday. Have a great week.